Actually, on the celebrity hotline, way off on the East Coast, I believe, right? Yeah, that's right. Where are you yeah. hanging at? Where are you hanging at right now? Well, I'm hanging out right now in uh, Jersey, and it's next to uh, Philadelphia, and I'm having a great time down here. That's what I thought. I saw the area code, and I said, "Wait a minute, this is not going to be a New York thing." <laughs> and my my first guess was Philadelphia. Well, no, it's, it's near Philadelphia. It's like towards Cherry Hill, towards down there. Even though my hometown is New York. Mm. That's where I was uh, raised in New York. But not where you were born. Not where I was born. I was born in uh, Puerto Rico. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm looking at the bio, and I'm reading that he's from Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico. Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico, Which 100% is, Latino. That is very cool because I have a whole tribe of cousins. The um, whole Dones family really? is from Rio Piedras in Puerto Rico. Yeah, it's and nice. It's nice over there. I mean, you there's, know. There's like a million of them. It's cool. It's cool. And, and, and I came like very young. I came very, very, very young to uh, New York, and that's where I was raised, and that's where, you know, I love freestyle, and that's where everything started for me, really, was in New York. Now, being born in Puerto Rico, were you affected at all by the style of music there? Uh, yes, I was. I was. Um, in a way that I, I think Latin people, like like Latin people that come from Puerto Rico, they, they have like uh, uh, a tendency to want to do both things, sing in Latin and sing in English. And I think it's, it's, it, it did affect me because I like their sound and, and it, it helps to be more creative in today's freestyle sound. How um, early or how late did you leave Puerto Rico to come to New York? Uh, well, I, I went back and forth, but my first trip here from Puerto Rico, I was only a month old. That was it? That was it. And then I kept going back. And I, w I was good for two years and study over there, and then I came back. Mm. But really, really, you know, I came very young from Puerto Rico to here. In terms of the music, um, what would you say would be the major differences between what you experienced over in Puerto Rico and then you came over to the East Coast and did some more experiencing? Uh, it, 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 it's a big difference. There's a big, big difference. I mean, over there, uh, to be honest, like uh, something like freestyle would be would be. Very, very, I can't even explain it. It's so giant over there because it's, it's different sounds. They love heartbeats. And over there, typically, everything is, is salsa, merengue, you know, a little bit of, of, of um, Caribbean music. But when you take, a, a, like, a, an English record, like like a dance record, they go crazy. They love it because it's, 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 it's a different sound for them. It's not something that they, they, they commonly used to. You're, you're fairly young. I would imagine when you were coming up, Menudo must have been like the big thing over there. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I saw Menudo live a couple of times. I used to be a big Menudo fan. Um, so I, I saw them live a lot of times. I hanged out in, in like in the backstage when I was when I was small because my family. I come from a very like uh, music oriented family. Uh, my brother plays plays drums. He plays for like different groups. Um, usually like like uh, church bands and stuff like that. I got an aunt that sings. Uh, she's in Puerto Rico, but she sings. She sings professionally, but not for the crowd. She sings for, like, uh, homeless people, and they come out with records, and then they donate all the, the money to, to helping them shelter and stuff like that. And she does also uh, singing for other countries that are in war. And with the recordings, they just give the money to build houses mm. and stuff. So I come from a very oriented like, music family. That's how come it came in my blood. So these were the ones that influenced you to maybe take that step? Yes, they did. I always wanted to be a singer since I was little. I mean, I always practiced. And I would put people's records on and, and sing along and, you know, and, and do those crazy little stuff when you're little. So you land on the East Coast after spending um, part of your life in Puerto Rico. Was the plan there to enter the world of music or is it just something that happened along the way? Uh, no, it started very young. I always, I always knew I wanted to get into music. I didn't know how I was going to get into it or, or, or I tell you the truth, I didn't know if I was going to be singing English or Latin, okay, because I was doing a lot of like practicing a lot of Latin stuff, learning a lot of songs in Latin. I really didn't know which direction at that point, but I knew definitely that I was going to be an artist. How, um, how discouraging was it, if at all, just a couple of years ago? I mean, you are a freestyle maniac. Right. Um, it seems like 
most of the music that's affected you has been freestyle, and of course the the, um, the songs that that I've got from you are freestyle songs. But a couple of years ago, freestyle was considered to be um, the bad bad stepchild in terms of music. Right. And uh, you stuck with it, and you continued to go with it. Well, I think I think in, in all type of music, you're gonna have times where the music either you know either you know they stop producing good records or it just flows out for a while but you got to believe in your music i believe 100 percent of my music i love my music and i love my music for many different reasons one is because it's, it's positive i mean i don't think about negative stuff um you know i don't like music that talks about guns or drugs i'm i'm, I'm against that 100 percent because i wouldn't like uh, my little brother or my sister or one of my families to be influenced by one of these music and go out and, you know, God forgive, shoot somebody. So that's why one of the reasons I love freestyle. Another thing is it's always different. I mean, you know, you have good artists, you got bad artists, but it's always different. It's not like, like every other music that, that is always going to be more or less what you expect. If freestyle is something, uh, you're going to come out with a song, it's going to have horns and another song. It's going to have a, a, a different drums that you were like, wow. So it, it's, it's interesting. I love music for, I love free stuff for many different reasons. It, do, it does seem like your material is very personal. Yeah, it is. It is. All my stuff, I mean, I, I sing with passion. I sing because I love it. I sing, I just don't sing it if somebody gives me a word and says, Savar, here, I got a song for you. Sing it. No, I, I have to feel it. It has to come from the heart. It has to make my hair stand up when I sing. And when I'm in front of the mic, I have to really like, I have to live the song. If I don't live the song, I'm not going to record it, and it's it's not going to come out because then I know the feeling I got, the people are not going to get it. That's that's why when 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 if you if you listen to the songs, I sing it with feeling, with love, like if it's really happening to me, because that's the way I like people to feel it. Wow. Don't 
you know, this happened to me uh, three days ago, four days ago, I can really relate. That, that's very important in, in lyrics, I, I think. Well, I think that's one of the reasons why here in Chicago, freestyle has remained to be a force in the music world because the young people who are listening to the music can relate to it. You can't relate really to a lot of what's out now in terms of the gangster rap right. and, and all of that right. stuff, but you can relate to a freestyle song because it's emotional and it's personal. Right, right. No, it's true. It's very true. And and and, and, and it, it takes it takes people to a positive place. I mean, you have to be positive in today's in today's society, which you know that everything is negative. Everybody's like is either in drugs or, or violent, and you know you just need something where they say, "Wow, that's kind of cool," you know, and and. They feel a good vibe instead of a negative vibe. Right. Um, before we get into a, a little bit more of your background and how you got involved initially, um, I look at the um, the two records that I've got in front of me now, the Don't Take Your Love Away and the Where Do I Belong. Right. And I always read the credits. I like to see who produced. I like to see who wrote. Interesting to note that you've got two very prominent singers who worked with you on these songs. Right, right. You've got um, Jimmy Tunnel, oh. who is known by the world in terms of um, the backup stuff he did right. and he's also done solo stuff for MCA right. and of course on the new tune George Lamont. Of course. <laughs> How do you manage to work with such prominent um, singers? Well that, that's one of my, that, that's one of my, well, how can I say, that? that's one of my, uh, that, that's what I do best. In other words, I want to give the best material, I want to get the best vocalist, I just don't want to get somebody and, and say, here, could you do background vocals? I need a, a part for you here. No, I want the best. I want the best because I feel that when a consumer buys a record, it should be 100% produced well. It should have good lyrics, good vocals, and background is very important. So I, I try it hard. I tell you the truth because it's hard to get uh, a good background vocals, especially uh, the way I look for them. I, I, I'm always looking for the best. I want the very best. If I could, I even go the extra mile. If I have to travel somewhere and have a meeting, if I have to go through the record company, I want the very best. I mean, I couldn't get bigger than that because it's, it's, sometimes it's impossible, but I try to get the best I could. And, and you're always going to see that in every record. Um, I don't know if you've seen in Tears, also, uh, the one who did background vocals was Johnny Young. Johnny Young also worked with MCA, and he's a rock artist. He okay, does, uh, uh, rock band. That's the one that we were talking about yesterday off the air. Yeah. Uh, where Tim Schomer gave me a cassette, so I have no credits at all on that. Right. I have a cassette from Tim Schomer, and it was a killer song, but I knew nothing in terms of who worked with you on it. And it's interesting to note that Johnny Young um, is your third in your trilogy of um, people who have worked with you on your on your music. No, uh, Johnny Young, not Johnny Young. Oh, my fault. I said Johnny Young. It was Johnny Young. He's a rock. He's a rock star. Um, he does very, very good stuff for like MCA Atlantic, and his voice is like, is like a, a Jimmy Tunnel. Very, very, very quick. great. And I think that's important. I don't think you should put anybody just to do background because you want to hear. You want them to hear, hear the voice, hear the, the the feeling you have towards the song. Build it up. I'm I'm very creative when it comes to my song, and I'm very personal, and I try to give it. Or I, I want everybody to recognize Savoir as an artist who gives who gives quality product. That's that's my main thing. I think if you give quality uh, product, people will always respect you. Uh, people will always buy your records, and the people will listen to it. And and you'll always give credit for that. And you can tell too in the production work, um, the work that you do with these with these people because um, the harmony is incredible. And yeah. you can you can even tell who it is, if you know the singers, right. that singing background. And, and I would imagine that there are some artists, especially new artists, you've only been around a couple of years, right. that um, maybe they wouldn't have tried it because maybe they didn't want to be overwhelmed or something. Right. Well, they, they, they're scared. I don't think, I don't think, uh, I don't think you should be scared to letting somebody, uh, you know, pretty famous or somebody with a great voice do background vocals. I think you should be, I'm pretty honored to be working with the people because not everybody got a chance to work with the people I have. So I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty, happy i'm pretty honored and and i'm going to continue to do it i mean as far as as, as i know i want to get the best the best background vocalist that's very important in a record These, the new artists of today they don't understand how how well how, how important it is to get good vocalists get a good producer work the extra mile that's very important that's what really makes the song you going the extra mile and 1994 of course being a big 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 year for you with um don't take your love away. I guess it was probably the most successful year you've had thus far. Yeah, definitely. Don't take your love away was very, very good. Uh, that record did very good in New York. It got a radio play on 97.9. Uh, all the mix shows everywhere. 
I even did like three uh, TV specials. Uh, I did a show de mediodía in Channel 41, and that's for the uh, Univision, which is the the Latin station that goes everywhere. Okay, it's just everywhere. And I, I did a couple of shows uh, for Florida uh, for the TV, which is called Control. And a lot of stuff I was very successful, and, 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 and I'm very happy. But again, that's because you went the extra mile with a record. A record, you have to do everything you could so it could come out slamming. It has to come out slamming, or it shouldn't be out in the shelf. Now, is that what led to Where Do I Belong? Yes. And then the question also becomes, if you look at Where Do I Belong, it's with a different company. Yeah. Well, okay, the different company is because uh, I expect, I'm, I'm one of the, the artists that I think I'm a little... I'm a little complicated than all the other artists. The reason for that is that I want more than what, what people can give me. What, what I mean by that is that I want the record company. I, I think one of the, the problems that Freestyle has is the lack of promotions in a lot of these companies. They should get, really get behind the artist. And, and I think that promotions is what makes the artist. Some people, you know, say it's a song. Yes, it's a song, but it's the promotion. Because if you don't got a good promotion, nobody's going to hear your song. Nobody knows you came out with a song. And that's where I think a lot of a lot of times these these record companies they lack promotion. You gotta if you believe in the artist, you should promote a hundred percent. If you don't believe in the artist, you shouldn't you shouldn't pick them up at all. I mean, what's the deal with that over um, on the East Coast? New York used to be uh -huh. the city to go to, the state to go to, and it came time for the um, the big freestyle acts. The freestyle acts are still there, uh -huh. but the music isn't making the noise that it used to. York, it, it, it was like famous for freestyle. I mean, you, you could have gone to the corner and even the guy in the bar was, was, was jamming up his jukebox for freestyle. I mean, it was incredible. And I was like so excited. That's when I first came out with my record. Freestyle was everywhere. I mean, it's in the air. You can go to the supermarket. Sometimes they played it on, on, on the, the, the loudspeaker. I mean, it was incredible. 
And it had a lot to do with, with the, we had a station here called Hot 97. It was like number one. And Freestyle took that station to, to number one, to be number one on, 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 the, on uh, the charts there, the, the radio charts, I guess. And it was making so much noise. And a new buyer came in. And he figured he needed a, he, he was used to another format and another way of music, which that happened to, unfortunately, a lot of labels. They either sell or, or new directors come in and they change the program. Kind of sounds like the radio business. Yeah, and unfortunately, I, I, I have, a, I, I have a, a thing that says if it's not broken, don't, don't try to fix it because there's nothing wrong with it. You're doing good advertising. All the clubs in New York was advertising. They made it number one. And then he came and he changed it all the format. And unfortunately, uh, from the format, Freestyle wasn't in the format no more. So um, nobody started like, like listening to Freestyle no more because it wasn't on the radio. And music is commercial. So whatever's on the radio, that's what the people go for. Unfortunately, it shouldn't be like that because you got, like, uh, you, got, you got rock and roll and a lot of stations don't play rock and roll, but rock and roll is still alive and making millions and millions of dollars. Uh, but like I said, they changed the format and unfortunately Freestyle stood out and that's what really dropped New York from Freestyle. But it's in the air, you, you can feel it. Everybody misses it. A lot of people are still playing it in the cars. When, when, when people are, like stop and watch their cars and stuff, you can still, they, they still jam up and pump up freestyle. They miss it in the club. Uh, they had a lot of problems with, uh, with rap because they had a lot of fights. I mean, in the papers, it was all kind of things that, that some clubs even shut, you know, they had to shut down because they killed one or two because of that problem. Mm. So they miss freestyle in the sense that then they wanted back more freestyle artists in the club. But no radio promotion, unfortunately. That's yeah. what that's what really happened in New York. And it was basically safe to go to a freestyle show in New York back then because the artists were were basically wholesome artists. They didn't incite the crowds. Right. No. No. It was, and it was a good crowd. It was uh, decent people. That's that's one of the things wh where I went back to and saying that you have to give people positive music. It's a positive that that they go into the clubs. They know they're gonna have a nice time. They either take their girlfriend or friend, or or, or, or everybody goes alone, but without looking for problems. They don't got these groupies, which you got, like, in a club, they go 38 guys, and, and you only see, like, one girl and stuff like that. I mean, Freestyle was very decent. They never had a problem with Freestyle. I never heard of a club that somebody got killed because, you know, an artist came in and it was a Freestyle artist. Never. Well, I know Freestyle is definitely making um, a comeback, and the markets are starting to open up all over again, and it, it may never be what it was you know, seven, eight years ago. Right. But look at the markets now, and I'm sure you've got plenty of places to go to and perform. Definitely, definitely, definitely. It's like every weekend I'm busy. Uh, I do a lot of clubs in Philadelphia. I do a lot of clubs in Jersey and Florida, okay? And, you know, I'm, I'm doing a, uh, next week I'm doing a gig in Texas. I mean, especially like those places, Chicago, Texas, Florida, freestyle is big. I mean, they, they love it. It's, it's, it's like, you can feel it. Even even down here, like towards Jersey, Jersey going towards like Philadelphia, the border, every car that's in the street has their... their their speaker pumped up with, with freestyle. And I know with, with the friends I have out there, um, the tapes, the mixtapes. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, the CDs, they're selling. Oh, yeah. They sell actually more than any other one because they have like a variety of, of, of classics and, and new stuff and new artists and, and the way they mix it and pump it up is doing very good. I mean, I, I walk in New York and see a lot of, uh, of the tapes and it has a lot of freestyle and, and I'm surprised they have more freestyle than, than, than all the other like discos and stuff like that. And I asked him, how's it doing? He said, it's great. I mean, these, these are my best sellers. And I'm like, wow. Well, it's the same way here. They sell thousands every month. Yeah. Uh, now for the big, big, big important questions. Mm -hmm. um, number one, what's your stage show all about? Number two, when do you bring your stage show to Chicago? Because with the shows that we've had here in the last couple of months, I would have expected that somebody by now would have brought you in, but it still hasn't happened. Okay, well, uh, right now, since I'm, I'm like, I'm like, uh, it's re very busy in the sense I'm getting ready for a new project, uh, meaning the new, the, the new single. I'm getting ready. I mean, it's, it's something totally different than the other stuff that I did, totally different. So I'm really focusing on that. And, and, and I still have a lot of local shows because my shows are booked like in advance. So sometimes a month in advance, I'm already booked every weekend. Mm. You know, so it, it, it's, it's, it's going to take time. I'm going to go to Chicago. I can't tell you exactly when, but I will be there. Uh, but like I said, it's, it's kind of hard because I'm dying to go to Chicago. I think I, I love Chicago because they gave me the support from the beginning, and, and, and I appreciate you and, and everybody in Chicago that supported me 
and they tell me they love my music and I love them for that. Yeah, that, well that's why I asked the question, because the listeners request it left and right, um, Tim plays it in his mixes, I'm playing it in my shows, and I'm like, well why don't the promoters jump on it? <laughs> it, it, it don't make no sense. Yeah, well, who said, who said music makes sense? <laughs> that's true. That's exactly true. Um, anybody else maybe that has helped you out that maybe you want to mention while we're on the air doing the interview thing? Well, you helped me out a lot and I want to thank you, okay? And also Tim Schomer. Tim Schomer is a great guy. Uh, I wish everybody would support him because he's one of a kind and he's really helped me out. And I owe so much to Tim. If not, if it wasn't for Tim and you, I mean, my music wouldn't even be heard in Chicago. So, you know, I appreciate that. Well, the bottom line is it's good stuff. Thank you. So why... You know why keep it underground? Right. And, and I and I say my thanks to Tim too because Tim has this habit of when he gets something new, he throws it on cassette, and he'll give me a copy if I don't already have one. Right. And if if I'm lucky enough to scoop him, which doesn't happen like it used to, I can do the same thing for him. And, and the music itself needs to stay alive. Right. No, Otherwise, you know, artists like you are it's going to be limited. Right. Can't have that. Any um final words for everybody who's a fan of. Savoir here in um, Chicago. Well, I want to thank you. Like I said, I want to thank everybody for supporting me. Uh, I want to thank you for enjoying my music. And uh, the next single is gonna be something uh, really to look forward uh, to, to look forward. Uh, it's gonna be hot. It's gonna be different. Okay, it's gonna be different from "Don't Take Your Love Away" and "Where Do I Belong." When I mean different, I mean it's gonna have a different flavor. It's gonna have uh, a different style to it. It's gonna have different vocalists. I mean. It's going to be something hot. I'm really working on it. I mean, I've been working for Italian Truth for about four months. That's how much time I put into a project, meaning getting the right vocalists, getting the right beats, getting the right music, and, and I want it to be slamming, and I'm sure the crowd is going to love it. Because that's why I'm doing it. I'm taking so long to do for the crowd to love it. Well, I'm sure that they will enjoy it, and I hope that when that project does come out, I would imagine at some point you've got an album in the works. Yeah, well, I'm working. I'm working on an EP, actually. I'm working on, on some good stuff. And I'm, I'm working on with different producers also to give it a little flavor, uh, a little different different uh, a feeling. Uh, and I got some pretty cool stuff. And I'm also working on a ballad. I mean, a great ballad. I'm good. talking about the type of ballad that you're with your girl and you want to hug her and kiss her and you say, wow, don't ever leave me, that type of ballad. We need more slow jams. <laughs> Definitely. All right, well, listen, it's been um, nice talking to you on the Sunday afternoon. Version of words and music, the words and music of Savor, and when the stuff does come out, we do need to talk again. Okay. And if not on the Celebrity Hotline, hopefully you'll be in the city and we'll just do an in-studio visit. Definitely, and I want to thank you for having me, and thank you for supporting me and helping me, and, and I love your show. Well, thank you for giving us with the music, with the new, 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 new. Thank you for providing us um, with the killer music and for keeping the uh, freestyle movement alive because if we didn't have the artists, you know, the music would just probably fade away. Okay, thanks. Thanks, and, and keep supporting the music that I love, so, uh, freestyle. That's, that's, that's the music it be.